So today I'm going to do a humble brag of the smallest wins can be the most life-changing as a dad. So I do the cooking in our household and every night I make dinner and there's this routine that we're kind of in with the kids in the age group they're in. Again, they're 10, 8, and 6 and you probably know exactly which one I'm talking about. That one, no matter what you put in front of them, it's the worst dinner ever. And it's this almost like anxiety I have of making dinner because I'm like, oh, I don't want to just hear how horrible it is. And also we've been working on how like rude it can be when you just tell me it's horrible or you say the word disgusting. And so we're using these words to describe things that hurt my feelings. And I've been trying to communicate that there's many better ways to communicate these things to me and better ways to deliver overall feedback about this. And so Tonight, I made beef Italian shells, or could also be like a Chef Boyardee, but, or not Chef Boyardee, a hamburger helper. But this is, it's shells, it's a bunch of other stuff. And it's something that we've made before. And generally, it's like mix or match whether they like it. Well, going into the process, when we sat down for dinner, and all of a sudden, like a moment that will sit with me forever. I probably will remember this forever even though it's so simple. There was a random moment where my daughter, who's six, said, Daddy, thank you for making dinner, but I don't want any of it. And my heart just dropped. Because the moment she said, Daddy, thank you for making dinner, but I don't want any of it. You have no idea how long I've worked for them to be able to say like, Dad, I appreciate you making dinner, but I don't want any tonight. Like giving them better language is like, we even have a phrase for it called dad words. And those dad words are things that they always think like, oh, dad words. Are you kidding me, dad? I don't use dad words. I'm not cool enough. So it's this kind of thing that we have going on. And I've been trying to get these little moments that I feel like I've put in 3,000 reps on trying to get them to understand how to provide feedback without someone getting like completely pulled down with what they're saying, or even using words that are way more negative than they need to, like describing dinner as disgusting. Like that may be how you feel, but there's so many better ways to do that. I'm positive you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so it just reminded me because then all the other two kids did it. And it just kind of was like, whew, like literally I felt my heart energy release. I felt just this weight off my shoulders, like I've been trying to do something for so long, and then it just clicks, which is the epitome of fatherhood. I can't tell you how many times there's things that I just repeat till I'm blue in the face, and then just one moment, poof, it happens, and it's done, and they do it on their own now, and it's like, damn it, why was that so hard? But that's parenting. You don't get to say how many times it takes them to use their manners at the dinner table to provide that feedback. All you get to do is remain the lowest heartbeat in the room, be the response that you want them to use, give them the language to understand how to articulate it back, and just keep repeating. Honestly, that's, I mean, that's the major lesson here. If you're not taking notes, take notes. Repeat what you want followed. And there's another way to say this. I think I did an episode on this way back that you normalize what you normalize. So if you normalize language of one way, then that's what gets normalized. And if you have language of something else, then at some point they learn that language from somewhere else. So you normalize what you normalize. And often there's an idea that I did an episode way back on this for sure on parenting to the curve. That there's this idea of we think that we have to shoot for 100 or we have to pull kids to 100% every single time. But the reality is they're kids. They're not going to get it 100% of the time. And we don't get it 100% of the time as adults. So why the hell do we put it on them to have the same feeling towards it? Remember, parenting towards the curve just means you want to hit the number as close as you can, as many times as you can, and the curve will produce a good result. You don't need 100%. You just need to parent towards the curve. And all I'm doing tonight is celebrating that win. It just feels like a million dollars. I can't tell you how good this win 
feels. So celebrating my win, hopefully passing it on to you and finding all of those ways that you can rephrase your words. And finally, I'll leave you with this little bit of a dad hack for what dad words are is oftentimes the kids will come up to me and just either demand something or tell me to do something very abruptly with no like, please, thanks you, anything like that. And what I do is, hey, let's rewind and try that again. Hey, Dad, looks like you're busy. Can you give me a hand when you get a second? And now they all get annoyed with that. But I keep doing that because every time I pull back, I give them the right words, repeat that over and over and over, they will graph on to how to get things done. Because these are words that you want them to use in real life. And that's what we're doing, not raising kids. We're raising adults. And sometimes it can happen in the simple us of moments like dinner saying, Daddy, thank you for making dinner, but I don't want any of it. Damn it. I love those kids. Thank you. Have an amazing day. And we'll be back again with you tomorrow.